to achieve the dreams of science fiction, to boldly go beyond our solar system, we will have to revolutionize space propulsion. In a few isolated labs around the world, scientists are struggling to invent the future. Working at a missile range in White Sands, New Mexico, Dr. Lake Mirabeau carefully hones tiny prototypes of a vehicle unlike anything ever put into space. Mirabeau imagines spacecraft propelled by powerful laser beams. A high-powered pulsed laser beam comes in the backside here, reflects off this parabola, and focuses inside of the engine here. The light is focused to such a huge intensity that it just breaks down the air here and blasts out a very strong shock wave, and in so doing propels the model forward in a series of pulses. The temperatures inside here, when the laser is on for about 18 microseconds, um, are of the order of 10,000 to 30,000 Kelvin, which is four to six times hotter than the surface of the sun. Aspects of Mirabeau's design go back to the 1950s, including its flying saucer-like shape. His innovation is to use an energy beam as propulsion, eliminating the burden of a spaceship having to lift vast amounts of fuel above the atmosphere. Mirabeau is using a laser developed by the now defunct Strategic Defense Initiative, known in the 1980s as the Star Wars program. With the laser pointed upward, a high platform must be maneuvered overhead to block the beam. This laser is so intense, it could accidentally cripple a satellite orbiting above. Copy five. Steve, are you arming? Roger, arming. Copy, let's go for it. 15 seconds. With a jet of air, Mirabeau spins the tiny spacecraft like a top to give it added stability. Copy, uh, 10 seconds. The laser beam is made up of infrared light. As the beam pulses, it strips air molecules of their electrons, creating an explosive plasma that propels the craft from below. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> what do you figure, 40 feet? Yeah, that was about 40 feet. 40 feet. Maybe 45. Ready to go again. Fried. <laughs> Thing is definitely fried. I'm ready to shoot. In the space business, a rocket's efficiency is measured by the number of seconds a pound of fuel will provide Five, a pound four, of thrust. Three, two, one. Five, the higher the number of seconds, the less energy it takes to propel the craft and the more efficient it is. The space shuttle main engines have a measure of efficiency that's about 450 seconds. In the laser heated rocket mode for a light craft, its efficiency would be of the order of 1,000 to 3,000 seconds. So we have a, uh, a factor of two to six better fuel efficiency than the shuttle. That translates to smaller fuel tanks, smaller structures, smaller engines. Everything shrinks enormously um, compared to the shuttle. 
which is, say, 90% propellant at liftoff. A modified version of Mirabeau's light craft, now being studied by NASA, would get off the ground using helium and a type of low-thrust rocket engine. It would trade lasers for less intense microwave energy, generated by a satellite that collects power from the sun. As the satellite nears the launch site, it aims, then releases the microwave beam. The light craft diverts a portion to its perimeter for propulsion and uses the rest to create an air spike, a shockwave that literally melts away air resistance. To fuel the rest of its journey, the light craft would use superheated gas, accelerated by powerful electrical and magnetic fields. Hurtling above the atmosphere, the light craft would go into orbit or travel to the moon and beyond. The vision I have for the future of uh, beamed energy propulsion is to create a technology that could replace airlines, replace spacecraft. Imagine a global aerospace transportation system that runs on solar energy generated in space and beamed to the vehicle in flight.